Well, hey everyone, welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. Today we have another banned and restricted announcement from Flesh and Blood. This one includes an errata. Uh, I was going to do a video last night when the news kind of broke, but then I just decided I would sleep on it a little bit and, and evaluate my thoughts. Um, and this is what I've come up with. We're going to look at the banned and restricted announcement. And then we're going to take a look at the three reactions that I've seen on Facebook. And I'm going to kind of give my advice, my way a little bit, but I'm really going to just look at the community's reaction to this because I think that's probably more important than my reaction. So uh, looking at the banner restricted announcement, um, of course, you have the big thing here is that Briar is getting a, um, a change in an errata. This is the first errata that we've seen in Flesh and Blood. A lot of people don't like erratas. Uh, I think if they're going to do an errata, putting it on a hero card is the best bet. Um, so that's kind of good. We'll, we'll talk about that later. But um, basically, they have, you know, they explain kind of the, the design process. If that's something you're interested in, go read the article. Um, but they kind of they take a look at Briar and they say we're gonna make it so make it so that Briar only can create one embodiment of Earth token per turn. Um, this is going to be all formats of Flesh and Blood, including sealed deck and booster draft, which is uh, that's crazy. That's insane. This is everything. So. Um, when you go to draft, when you go to play commoner, when you go to play everything, uh, you now need to use the new card Briar uh, that has the, the different tech. So it's good that it's a token card because they can easily get it in the hands of people. It shouldn't have any value, uh, but it is going to radically change all the um, all the content that's out there for deck techs, all the things that are going on in terms of um, like how to play sealed and, and strategies. It's going to change all that stuff up, so make sure you know that. Uh, all right, so here we go. The banned and restricted announcement. Then we've got from classic and from classic constructed. We've got ball lightning and plunder run. Uh, and now they did say, you know, there is the New Zealand Championship coming up, so they have um, uh, made this uh, so that the, that is exempt, so the the meta doesn't shift like that, and that of course is good. Um, but you've got ball lightning and plunder run and then in blitz you've got ball lightning and dusk blade so dusk blade is now not usable in any uh format at all uh a lot of people didn't like dusk blade anyway so i it is what it is we're not gonna get into my opinions too much um plunder run of you know they kind of said it's it's in briar and chain decks um it, there's a lot of conversation about Briar in this and not a ton of conversation about other heroes and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, So that's essentially what it is if you want to hear why it, there's other videos other people talking about just like this I wanted to take a look at some of the feedback from the community and uh, and just evaluate a little bit So I, I've broken this down into three categories of people and I'll talk about where I fit in kind of yeah, at the end probably uh, th There's three categories of people number one category that I see is the healthy uh, sorry, all my things got all moved around the healthy meta errors. Okay. And these are the people who, in my opinion, um, they are just all about the meta. They, they don't necessarily take into consideration the other avenues of the gameplay, the collecting, the investing, uh, the long-term type of thing. These people just want to play the game and have it be fun. And so they are actually a, a little bit excited. Now, now I'm going to protect all the names from these. I'm just going to share screenshots. Glad this happened, albeit way too late. Briar already warped the limited meta of Toa at launch, and CC has been skewed for too long. Ultimately, what this does is it makes me question their design and development team. I would rather have card restrictions than bannings. We'll talk about that a little bit. Curious how much this will affect people's interest in entering games. So this person is glad that it happened because of their play experience, but they are seeing the deeper picture of like how is this going to affect other conversations. Now, there's other people who are just like, man, uh, I already hear Briar's main staying is not going to change anything that you're going to see because of Mount, uh, Mount Heroic Force of Nature. Like, there's people who are like, no, this is just going to make Briar different. It's going to go in a different direction. People who think that the meta is going to be healthy for this. Um, Quite the contrary, I'm very excited to see what changes this brings to the game. In my opinion, the game has become either Briar or how to counter her. This is in itself seems to have led to a stagnation of imagination and creativity for the rest of the game. I think this is all very valid points. When the tournament is limited to a dominant hero and only one or two heroes that can stand a chance, that by definition is stagnation. Uh, and this has been a conversation since Briar's you know inception into the game. Uh, you know they did another ban and restrict, or they did kind of a ban and restricted announcement where they didn't buy ban and they said that everything was fine so i'm not sure what changed from here to there 
Uh, but the community seems to have thought, hey, and the people who are really heavy playing, Briar is OP. There needs to be some nerfing. Um, and so a lot of people um, leaning into that. Uh, Plunder Run was a good decision. Uh, this A lot of people, this is one of many uh, that I picked, but a lot of people talking about how Plunder Run um, is, A, it's a cheap card to do something with, so it doesn't really affect the market or anything like that. But Plunder Run has been proven to be, uh, in his words, abusive in the the way that they design their cards and the way that they have to design sets. Um, hi, honey. So this is just the idea that like because of Plunder Run and the design space that Plunder Run limits, it kind of just limits the ability to create new things and new heroes. And so it's just exhausting the space. And so that's a, a great point. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to get too much in my, but like, I think Plunder Run was a great card for a long time. I hate to see cards like that band that were such staples. Um, anyway, uh, but yeah, I mean, it does limit the design space and I understand that. And this opens up and they want a healthier, more vibrant design space. And then the last one I pulled, um, a good and needed balance to Briar. Once she took off, there was just, a, it wasn't a chance for her opponent to work around it. As for ball lightning, I'm just happy I don't have to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, you know, this is, uh, the, the people that play heavily and play every day and are constantly playing against Briar see this as a big issue. And so they are excited about these Briar nerfs. They are excited, uh, that the meta is going to open up a little bit and that people will be able to deck build and, uh, play tests in a different way and be more creative. And I think that's a very valid um, understanding and, and reaction to this re announcement. And that's the heart here. So look at all these reactions and say, no, there is valid reasons that people believe this way and why people are frustrated or excited. So uh, the other one, this one's a little smaller, uh, the splash nerfed. Um, I, I, I felt like a couple of conversation pieces were going this way, uh, but they never got flushed out as well on the internet. So uh, there's not as many of these, but there's a couple people who are like, hey, this nerfs Lightning Lexi. Uh, in addition, there's people who said, I'm glad that I have these plunder runs and mail. So like people who just built decks or people who um, have a Lightning Lexi deck who are playing it and excited about it. And now, you know, Ball Lightning is, is banned and that really affects that deck. Uh, there was some dialogue of how much does it affect the deck, but um, I think that these are just things. And I think it's important to remember uh, that people were excited about their deck building case before this. And that because of Briar, we now have some splash into some other things. Casu is another one. I couldn't find the actual, I was talking to a couple people uh, on the phone about it last night, but Casu uh, again, like losing out on some cards. And um, I think more with the plunder run. I think like the idea here also is a sense of um, the other side of this coin is people saying, hey, Everfest is going to provide some some new cards that replace these. I don't think that they had enough time to print Everfest in response to Briar. I don't think that that's the way that card design and printing works. Um, I think probably another, a different reaction is that there's something in Everfest that required Plunder Run or Ball of Lightning to kind of get the axe early. That's probably a more realistic point. But yeah, people who um, who have other decks, and I know Azalea has been a whole conversation piece where, uh, you know, there's just cards that are getting nerfed as a result of Briar and affecting other heroes. But that, again, creates a better environment, going back to the first one, of the healthy meta. So it all balances itself out in that round. Uh, and now this is the last group. I'm gonna call it the Magic the Gathering Sadness. And there's a lot more of these than there were um, other ones, at least that I found. Uh, and the Magic the Gathering Sadness are people who uh, just feel like, man, uh, they wanted something different from Magic the Gathering looking at Flesh and Blood. You know, they left Magic the Gathering as a result of constant bans and new sets breaking the formats and, uh, the, you know, the lack of play testing. And they wanted something different. And that's why they got involved with Flesh and Blood. And so now that there's these banned and restricted announcements that are becoming, uh, you know, bigger and more prevalent and more, you know, active and more whatever, it's people who are saying, man, is this really different? Um, and this is the ones that I hate to see because anytime somebody's coming like this guy, I think this is enough for me. Any, anytime someone's coming into the community and something forces them out, it's sad to me. Like I, I, I get bummed about it. Um, 
from someone who is very successful at high level magic gathering i'm seeing a lot of parallels to why wizard of the coast lost so much of their competitive player base over the years of banning if everfast is going to change the meta why ban anything they are showing that they don't trust or hold their developmental team responsible players will never fully be able to re responsibly invest in this product if they keep coward banding <laughs> it's a little strong uh the way they have been so uh, there's like I think that there's a dynamic too of fab players and magic the gathering players with the, a lot of these magic the gathering players are newer players into the format. Um, and there's a sense of like the community saying, Hey, you need to go play test and try it. Um, I like this one right here. LSS ought to try restricting some cards instead of outright bans. We talked about this with the seeds of agony ban on this channel where, Hey, if you just limited it to three cards instead of, instead of nine, um, I, I think that there's a lot of room to there. I would like to see them explore this space. It's something unique that they have to their game uh, that I feel like they haven't explored in these banned and restricted announcements. I guess there's a reason, uh, but th that seems to be another conversation. Uh, this guy, you know, him and his wife both use plunder runs and now they can't use them. They have so much for thinking Fab would be different than Magic Gang. I think there will be, I don't think it's that strong. Uh, people in some of my phone calls talking about the Omnath bands and how uh, they kind of printed a powerful card to sell the box for Magic the Gathering and how then it got, you know, they let the box sell for a while and then they banned it. I, I don't think that it's that strong. I don't think that it's that Magic the Gathering feeling where it's just like, seems like a cash grab. Um, I, I do think that there's going to be a lot of people who have to rebuild their decks now. And that ends up being like something that like the reason a lot of people got into flesh and blood is this idea that your deck never goes out of style. Your deck never goes, um, you know, you can always at least play it. Not, I'm not saying it has to be the utmost, most competitive deck, but you can always at least play it. And now all these decks that people have to go and rebuild completely, a lot of people might just not like a lot of people might just say, okay, it's not worth the time. And to me, that is the issue. Um, and why I, I don't want to see bands. Um, so, and that's why I think just uh, switching it up and saying, Hey, you can have this many cards in the deck. Uh, you, know, you can only have six of seeds of agony or whatever it is, uh, three ball lightning or three plunder run allows you to continue to build the deck. It just kind of nerfs a little bit. Um, this guy has created his player base. He's going to go ahead and uh, do a local ban list so it doesn't damage his local group because he's been, uh, you know, getting people to, to play for Magic the Gathering. So I think there's a Magic the Gathering sadness here that, like, people who came from that community and left Magic the Gathering because of ban and restricted announcements now are kind of feeling like, oh, maybe this isn't what I thought it was. Um, and, and that's a, you know, that's a valid concern. I think that's a valid thing. Um, so going back to this at the end of the day, uh, I want to hit back here at the end of the day, because of the extreme amount of love that people have for flesh and blood and for TCGs, uh, people are opinionated because they want to see things move in what they view as the best direction. And so I think the best reaction to all these individuals is to just say, I hear what you're saying let's play some games. I hear what you're saying. Let's keep collecting. I hear what you're saying. Let's trust the system. Uh, you know, LSS, uh, I think there's some things that need to be figured out. I think that there are, um, you know, I would like to see more play testing. I would like to see, obviously there was an issue with Briar. Uh, obviously that there was, there was an issue with that. And they said that they, you know, I think they have the system for building cards and they try to stick to that system. Um, but obviously there is something going on that's required them to say, Hey, we're going to ban this and we're going to remove this. And I would like to see less of that. That's my opinion. I would like to see less of in the future, a new set comes out and then, you know, we have a ban and I would personally like to see less of them. I do understand though, that when it does happen, it needs to be addressed and it needs to be fixed so that people enjoy playing the game. Uh, I totally and I totally understand that. I would just like to see it fixed on the front side of that, um, and that would be better. I think that would just be better. Um, so I, I, I hate to see people saying, you know, I, I'm not going to be playing anymore as a result of you know the banned and restricted stuff. And I hate even more hearing the community say, well, why don't you just play a better deck or why don't you just learn the game better? Because that's just not the way that the world works. And 
if we want this game to grow wide uh, and not just deep like i feel like the flesh and blood community is very deep in terms of people who really love the game and are really invested in but if we want it to grow wide we have to be more receptive to those people who are frustrated because they just got involved and um, so as a community i would encourage you no matter where you fit into this range of three categories try to see the point of view from the other side the other perspective because again we all need all of us in this community if we want to grow if we want to uh, be the next big tcg our community needs to be um, it needs to be a healthy community it needs to be a community that understands that there are different perspectives and respects different perspectives and tries to hear the other side of each perspective and doesn't just um, accuse things and uh, and point fingers and whatever so anyway hope you guys have a great day let me know what you think about all these bans and restricted announcements and uh remember be kind to the people around you